We are now entering the lake of sunken secrets. Together, we're going to explore one of the most mysterious bodies of water in Texas. Welcome to the Richland Chambers Reservoir. Although this large, sparkling body of water is known by some as a beautiful fishing and boating destination, beneath its deep, murky waters lurk many dark historical secrets, some of them from the times of the Civil War. Come with us as we investigate the story of the lost Civil War era cemetery that sank underwater well over a century ago, only to somehow resurface once again, exposing long forgotten grave sites and even human remains. We'll also be searching through the concrete remains of an abandoned island installation on the reservoir and exploring a decades long deserted overgrown state highway here that takes a plunge straight down from the shore to the bottom of the lake. My name is Mauricio, and I'm an explorer and adventurer. If you'd like to join me as I explore the abandoned, historical, and natural hidden wonders that the United States has to offer, feel free to subscribe to my channel. But prepare to buckle up. This is going to be a wild ride. The Richland Chambers Reservoir is a man-made body of water that was completed several decades ago by the Tarrant Regional Water District. The dam was closed on the Richland Chambers Reservoir on July of 1987, and by May of 1989, the whole reservoir was filled with water. The project was a success, and it provided the local community with not only a water source, but also a place to go fish, ride boats, and have a good time. However, in 2009, a chilling, unexpected discovery surfaced when boaters spotted a white object on the shore of one of the lake's islands and went to investigate, finding a human cranium and detached jawbone. Sheriff's deputies went to the site with Richardson-based archaeologist Alan Skinner. At first, they found one single grave in the same location, but no evidence of anything else. The bones appeared to be 100 to 120 years old, and consistent with those of an African-American male, about 40 years old, who was likely a freed slave that was working on a plantation on what is now the bottom of the lake. A short time later, rains once again submerged the site. When the water levels went back down, Skinner, under the authority of the water district, returned to the mysterious island and found adult human bones scattered all along the beach. In addition, archaeologists found 25 bodies, including 4 adults and 21 children, at the sunken burial ground. Square-cut coffin nails found in the wooden caskets suggested the bodies had been buried before 1890. Crews even found a few personal items with the remains, including a few buttons, some beaded jewelry, and some silver coins from the mid-1800s. I wanted to know more. Indeed, I can't stop thinking about these questions that afternoon at the lake as my friends and I head out on our kayaks to explore one of the many islands located on the Richland Chambers Reservoir. This particular island where we're going to seems to contain the concrete remains of an abandoned facility that we believe predates the creation of the reservoir in the late 1980s. While the island is located not far from the nearest point on the lake's shore, most of the shore around the lake here is private property. So we'll be kayaking to the island from the nearest public boat ramp, slightly further away. Let's go. This is our landing spot. Let's check it out. So not too long ago, here in this very lake, some human remains were found at one point. And uh, when they were examined, it was determined that they belonged to an African American from the years just after the end of the Civil War. Yeah, here's the, the concrete ruins. It's just the foundations now. Yeah, and so they found there was a whole post-Civil War cemetery for freed black slaves. And so during a drought, they were exhumed and relocated so that they could have a proper burial. And that was on this very lake on a different island. This island has some ruins of a facility. Couldn't find any information about what it is or when it was built. But it looks like it's been abandoned for a while. It wouldn't make much sense to build this facility on an island so isolated. So it was probably from before the years of the reservoir. Don't know what these were. Something metal. Looks like this is the edge. I don't know what else is around here. There could be more under all the vegetation. This actually may be a road that leads right into the lake. And since it wasn't an island before, it would have just kept going on down into the valley. Although it's an interesting find, it's hard to tell what this facility once was. Perhaps a few silos and some other buildings? Interestingly enough, one road on this island leads straight downhill and under the surface of the water. 
and you can see the outline of more objects and or structures just under the murky waters of the lake. Who knows what was once here and what else could be found at the bottom of the lake. After leaving the island, we head for another abandoned site at this very reservoir, an abandoned portion of Texas Highway 309, or what I like to call the Highway to Oblivion. I'll be the first to admit that we don't know everything about this crumbling, overgrown public roadway, but what we do know is that it has to have been abandoned since at least May of 1989, as that's the month by which the reservoir had been completely filled with water. And this fascinating find comes complete with trees and bushes growing right through its crumbling concrete surface. A portion of Texas Highway 309 is still in use, although now it's not much more than just the road leading to the public boat ramp that we used to access the lake. The road dips right into the water where the ramp is, only to resurface later at a very heavily overgrown peninsula, and then dive back into the depths of the lake once again. While it is a bit sad to see this crumbling, neglected, and forgotten road plunging into the dark depths of the Richland Chambers Reservoir, never to be seen again, I at least know that it's in good company with the many other historical treasures and artifacts that are surely still left to be discovered at the lake's muddy bottom. But I can't get the abandoned cemetery out of my head. I learned that, even now, the graves remain somewhat of a mystery, but some believe that they could belong to former slaves who became sharecroppers for their previous masters. These burial grounds were submerged when the Tarrant County Water Improvement District created the man-made lake in the 1980s. True, all known cemeteries at the time had indeed been noted and moved before filling the reservoir, but this small unknown cemetery was unmarked, and most of the graves didn't have tombstones. And it wasn't alone, not even close. According to the Corsicana Daily Sun, authorities believe that there are other missing cemeteries at the bottom of the lake, including several long-lost Native American burial grounds. In addition, Bruce McManus, chairman of the Navarro County Historical Commission, is convinced that the area of the Richland Chambers Lake is on property formerly owned by a slave owner, and several black families worked in the cotton fields there. McManus believes that this particular lost cemetery dates back to the mid to late 1800s. All remains found at Richland Chambers Reservoir were eventually exhumed and later given a proper, dignified burial at the Woodland Memorial Park Cemetery, where they still remain to this day. Truly, I can't believe all of the history that's contained in this beautiful, yet seemingly unassuming body of water. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Explore RC if you're enjoying my content, as well as clicking on the notification bell to be notified of any future videos that I produce. I'll see you on the next one.